Let me cook with this complete passing tutorial in EAFC 24. If you haven't yet subscribed yet, what are you doing? It's free, just like this information, which took me hours, if not days, to make. Show your appreciation for your boy. But without further ado, let's get into it. First up, the basics of passing. This is necessary for this video, simply so that you guys know what buttons you should be pressing when I refer to certain techniques. To pass, it's obviously X. To through ball, it's triangle on PS5. And to obviously cross or lob the ball, it's square on PS5. Now we have the lofted pass, and if you double tap the pass button or the through ball button, it will do a tiny dinked lobbed pass to the player that you are attempting to pass to. This is good because it allows you to pass over the reach, the tackle, let's say, of the defender approaching you and attempting to intercept the ball. So it can be helpful compared to a regular pass, which is a little bit easier to intercept. We then have the driven pass, and I'm talking about the lobbed driven pass, that is. The lobbed driven pass can be done with R1 and L1, and then you're lobbing it with the square button. This does a driven lobbed pass over to the opposite attacker who you're attempting to switch to, or at least hit in a quick fashion. This pass in particular is very useful, specifically from the back and you're attempting to switch quickly across to the wing back. We then have the actual driven pass. If you hold R1 and you press the pass button of X, what will happen is that the player will drive the ball towards the recipient. And from there, you're able to obviously take a touch in or do a quick regular pass afterwards, which is a technique that's quite advanced, but it is very useful for opening up defences. We then have the curved through ball. Now I call it curved because when you hold L1 on R1 and you through ball it, what happens is the player will put a curve onto the ball into the path of the attacker. It's almost as though it's a mix between a regular through ball and a threaded through ball, but you're essentially threading it through the space but then curving it into the path of the attacker. And I find it's super, super effective this year especially compared to threaded through balls. We then have the lobbed chip, which is performed by holding L1 and then the square button. And what it is, is a high dink of the ball. It's very good for, let's say, when you're trying to get away from press, and you want to dink it over the reach of the approaching defender, where a regular chip would, in fact, hit the defender, but the L1 variation wouldn't, and it's a higher variation of it, and I find this very useful in these certain situations. Last but not least, you do have the over the top through ball. And this is performed by holding an L1 or LB on net spots and then a through ball. And this will lob it in the air into the pathway of your attacker. So there you have it, the basics of passing. We now need to move into what you need to avoid when passing. Hold up just one second. Why aren't you subscribed yet? Thank you. In EAFC, you see the thing is, a lot of the time, people make these common mistakes and I always pick them up in my coaching academy. And that is, firstly, not facing towards the direction of the recipient that you're attempting to pass to. You see, the thing is, if you pass with your back to the player who you're attempting to pass to, the accuracy will go down and the power will go down. And quite often, if you attempt to pass to someone who is not even in the direction to where you're facing, you will be intercepted because the defender will be able to sweep that pass up. You need to face in the direction of the recipient. And this comes in line with taking a touch towards that direction. If you don't take a touch first time into that direction that you want to pass to, then how are you expecting it to reach the attacker you're attempting to pass to? And I have deconstructed this in my complete taking a touch tutorial, which can be found on the channel. But back on topic, I recommend taking a touch towards the attacker you're attempting to pass to and then passing to him rather than facing the opposite direction. Last but not least, the mistake I need to talk about is people not creating passing lanes. And this is a big issue because a lot of the time people are attempting to pass to an attacker thinking that they will make it every time. 
and in times they will blame the game. They will say, oh, the pass was too slow off the foot of the attacker. Why does this always happen? The matter of the fact is they haven't created a passing lane. Now we'll get into techniques of how to do this later on in this video, but it's super important that when attempting to pass, there is a clear lane between the passer and the recipient. Because if there isn't, there'll be a high chance of it being intercepted by the defender. I then want to talk about spam passing. You see, later on in this video, I'm going to deconstruct the importance of first time passing and passing with high tempo. But you see, the thing is, a lot of people will either not pass that much at all, which can hinder their ability to build up and get away from press, or they'll pass too much. They'll spam pass it. And you need to find a balance when it comes to passing in EAFC. You can't spend too long on the ball, and you can't just pass for the sake of passing. It needs to be calculated. And this is where I move into the difference between rushing and high tempo. People always get this confused when I say, you need to not rush, but you also need to maintain a high tempo in the attack. You see, the thing is, rushing constitutes you attempting to always pass forwards or pass for the sake of it in a quick fashion that in general doesn't have any calculation to it. But high tempo is quick passing, quick build up, but you're not always passing, spam passing. You're taking touches, you're dribbling to the space, then maybe three or four first time passes open up. Then you need to take another touch of the space, hold it up a little bit, and then go again. There is a difference, and you need to bear in mind that when passing, you shouldn't spam the pass button, nor should you rush forwards when attempting to build up. It is now necessary to delve off into through balls, and more specifically, the significance of them this year. They are rather overpowered when it comes to through balls, especially as I was saying before the L1 R1 variation. If there is an attacker making a run, then L1 and R1 will be the best variation for you. And then of course, you have lobbed through balls, which as we broke down, you hold in L1 and you through ball the through ball. And these are rather overpowered this year because they do seem to lock on to the attacker nearly every single time. And what I'll say about those is you shouldn't spam them because people do become addicted to them. If they work a couple of times, then they think they should resort to through balls or over the top through balls every attack. This should not be the case. You should be building up with quick tick attacker tempo and getting down towards the 18 yard bots rather than just attempting to through ball in behind every time, which also links back to rushing as I was talking about beforehand but what I will say is if you're in a position where a threaded through ball would probably be intercepted because it's quite cramped and there are a lot of defenders around but you see your attacker running in behind this might be a necessary time to do an over the top through ball if it allows you to get down towards the 18 yard bots in a quicker fashion but again you shouldn't be rushing you should take your time you should build up with quick tempo but if there is an opportunity over the top through balls are rather overpowered. Now, creating passing lanes. We did delve into this in common mistakes that people make, but this is how to create passing lanes. There are usually three techniques. It's skill moves, it's through another player, or it's dribbling to make the defender commit to open up the lane to the inside attacker. And depending on what situation you're in, will depend on which technique you should use. But when it comes to skill moves, some of the skill moves that can help you find passing lanes include the ball roll, the elastico after a stop, potentially the reverse elastico, anything really that allows you to take the ball to the side of the defender and open up a lane to the attacker you are intend to pass to. These are more useful skill moves for doing that. And then when it comes to dribbling, you want to always keep your back to the opponent and try and make him commit to a certain side to then open up that lane to the inside attacker. And this entails chopping the lift stick back and forwards whilst keeping your back to the opponent and waiting for him to commit. Now, I have broken this down in my complete dribbling tutorial, so you can check that out on the channel. It's already out. But what I will say is dribbling to make defenders commit, to then create the passing lanes, 
is a very efficient way in various situations, for instance, let's say on the wing. We then have, last but not least, through another attacker. You see, if you want to get to the striker, let's say, but your opponent is covering that pass, you can use other attackers to get to the striker. You pass into the one that's to the side of the defender and then to the striker, rather than from the first passer and then into the attacker. You sometimes need to make two passes to get to the intended destination. And a lot of people make the mistake of this where they just hope that the pass will make the attacker. No, it needs to be calculated and you need to find the attacker through another one of your attackers. And this is where tunnel vision does come into play because you need to be looking around to see what other options you have are in the attack so that you can use other attackers if necessary. We then have driven passes. Boy oh boy, are they overpowered. And why I like these is because we did just delve into passing lanes, but what I find with driven passes is there can be less of a lane for you to actually reach the attacker with this technique compared to a regular pass, which you may need a bigger, larger lane to reach the attacker. It's simply because the driven pass is quick and it's pingy and it's very very effective this year it's actually quite overpowered and it will lock on to the attacker that you desire you just hold R1 and pass as I said in the basic segment and they are very overpowered this year in EAFC and I do want to mention about the technique of the driven pass into the regular pass I did briefly mention about this in the base hit segment, but I do want to do a standalone segment on this because this is how you open up defenses. If you look for the striker, you hit his feet, and you can do a subsequent pass afterwards to the attacker that may be beside the striker, it's very hard for your opponent to react. And from there, you'll notice that a lot of the time there will be spaces and gaps for you to exploit or other attackers will be making runs through the gaps that you've exploited because of how quick you were with the build-up and with your passing play. So the driven pass into the regular pass is a very effective technique this year. We then need to move into recycling the ball. This is one of the most effective attacking techniques that you will ever implement into your attack and it incorporates passing. You see, when you take the ball wide, and then you recycle into the middle. What it does is, once you take the ball wide, the defense has shifted out to that side and opens up spaces and gaps in the center. And when you recycle with passing back through to the middle from the width area, you'll notice there'll be gaps and spaces for you to exploit. Compared to if you were to, let's say, just attack up the center, it would be much harder for you to break down the opponent. However, if you recycle it from the wing, quick first time passes from the width to the middle, potentially driven passes as we broke down before, you will break down the defense every single time. But then I've given go passing. This is very effective, specifically for wing play. If you're looking for a way to beat opponents and beat defenders on the width area, then give and go passing is your friend because if you hold L1 as you receive the ball in and pass first time, the player on the ball will then give and go and he will give and go around the defender at times. So if you pass from the middle out to the wing to the winger and you hold L1 as you pass it back to the middle, the winger will make a 1-2 pass and he will be in behind. You can then throw it in through with a through ball or an over the top. It's quite effective this year, specifically on the wing. We then have hitting the striker's feet. Now, I did delve into this in my complete attacking tutorial, but I think it's necessary to mention once again in the complete passing tutorial, simply because it's a very effective way of breaking down defences this year, and in previous years, in fact. When you hit the striker's feet, defenders will follow you. They will literally tail you to attempt to essentially get a tackle in. But if you keep your back to the opponent and you dribble back into the space, the striker will open up gaps and spaces for your other attackers to run into. And this comes from hitting the striker's feet. If there is a slight gap from the middle to the striker, use the driven pass. R1 and pass at the same time. 
It will ping into the striker, and then from there you want to dribble backwards. This will allow you to drag out defenders and create spaces for you to exploit. It's very effective, and you'll score goals with this technique, undoubtedly in EAFC. But then I have player runs and coming to receive the ball. It's very, very effective if you don't have any passing options. And tapping R1 as you point the left stick towards the attacker you want to come towards you will give you more passing options this year in EAFC 24. Tap R1, have him come towards you, and it will give you more options, especially in times when you're stuck or you're getting squeezed by the opponent. We then have the driven give and go. And this is a mixture between the driven pass as well as give and go passing. You see, if you hold L1 and R1 at the same time, and you driven pass, the player will do a more powerful variation of the give and go. And this is specifically useful if the player you're attending to give and go with is at a far distance away from you. Let's say you have the winger, but you want to hit the striker, and he's in the center of the pitch. You can use the driven give and go from the winger into the striker, and it's a more powerful variation. It's just another tool to your locker that you can revert to in times when you need to find a pass that's quite far away. We then have skill move passes. Now, believe it or not, when you do pass off the back of a skill move, it does increase the accuracy. It's what I've found in previous years, and it has, in fact, been reincarnated in EAFC 24. And the best skill move for this, in my opinion, is the ball roll. See, a pass after the ball roll is super effective because not only does it create an angle for you to pass, as we spoke about creating angles for passes in creating passing lanes, but it also increases the accuracy. So if you ball roll and then you pass, you'll be able to find inside passes a lot easier, especially from when you're on the wing. We then have skill moves, of course, including the drag to drag, or potentially the step over. And I remember simply when I was playing the beta of the AFC 24, I was performing step overs and as I was doing it, passing afterwards, and I found it was more pingy, it increased the accuracy and the power of the pass. And it's still in the game and no one really uses it but it's very effective. We then have the ball line, a very, very effective way of breaking down defenses from the wing. It does incorporate recycling, but in a quick fashion. Not only do you not have to come back around, but I find with the ball line this year, it lots on every time to the attacker, so as long as you know when to pass. And the time to pass is when the attacker inside that you're intending to pass to runs in front of the defender or starts to make a run in front of the defender. And what you want to do is dribble towards the byline, then pass up it with the left stick and point in that direction. From there, you will lock on to the attacker, which you can then take a touch towards the space backwards and then shoot or towards the byline to sweat at home once again, it's very effective, very broken, and you should definitely use it in your attacking arsenal. We then have play a lot passing, and it's one of my favorite attacking techniques, simply because if you don't have a passing option, you can play a lock a player to come towards you and offer an option. If you don't have any runners or any movement in the attack, you can manually control the attacker and run him into space along the defensive line. It's so effective, and yet again, it's back in the AFC. To play a lock, you use L1 and R1 and then flick the right hand lock stick towards the attacker you intend to pass to. From there, the AI will control the initial attacker whilst you control the play you selected. You can then make a run in behind and thread him through. It's very effective and it's super overpowered again this year in the AFC. We then have taking a touch to determine the pass. An advanced technique, which entails the ability to have no tunnel vision, entails you to think ahead, and entails you to think of the best direction to take the ball so that you can reach the intended pass receiver. What pros are always doing is thinking ahead. They always know where they want to go next, and they're always thinking three to four passes ahead. If you know where to take the touch when you receive it, and then pass, this will help you achieve your goals, especially help you create three or four successive passes successfully to break down the defense. You need to take a touch into the space, number one, but then you need to also take a touch to the direction that is more desired or will help you achieve the pass that you're intending to do. 
It's very important. Think ahead with your passing, and this will allow you guys to break down defenses a lot easier. Well, then another Traveller Travella pass. It was brought to us last year, and it's quite effective. You see, if you hold L2 and you pass the ball, they will pass with the outside of their foot. And this goes the same for crossing. If you're wanting an outside of the foot curve, which might actually be a better curve for you to cross back post, then hold L2, hold in the cross button, and it will curve it with the outside of the foot into the path of the attacker. I then want to specifically talk about tunnel vision. A lot of the time when players are attacking and they're attempting to pass through defenses, they are so narrow-minded that they are only focusing on the player on the ball and they are not looking around for their passing options. This is the one of the most significant aspects of building up in any FIFA previous as well as this year in EAFC. You cannot be tunnel visioned. You need to be looking around and spotting your options. This entails you guys practicing actively looking around so that you can get better at this technique. I can't personally make you open your eyes more. But what I can do is say, actively look around for more passing options and stop being so narrow-minded and focusing only on the ball carrier. This will allow you to pass through defenses a lot better and see passing options a lot quicker than what you would if you were just focusing on the player carrying the ball. I then want to quickly do a quick segment on direct passing. What I will say is if you are struggling to string passes together, it could be a reason as to what I've mentioned previously in this video. But if not, if you're actually perfecting everything I've taught you, then I do recommend direct passing because direct passing will cause the AI players to come towards you more and offer you passing options. Sometimes it can be a lot better compared to just your standard forward runs or in general balanced. You should use direct passing if you're struggling for passing options, which I find is very effective, specifically when trying to get away from press. Which does bring me into the next segment of passing around press. This is something that I see people in my coaching academy struggle with every single time I coach them. What we work on is minimizing tunnel vision, attempting to open their vision up to the whole pitch. We then work on first time passing and then we work on touches because these three aspects will allow them to take the ball away from the approaching defender with the touch, will allow them to think two or three passes ahead with their passing, which will then allow them to get away from press. We also work on custom tactics and using direct passing, which, as I said, helps with getting away from press. It's very effective, and for you to actually get away from press, you need to implement all of these core techniques and tactics for passing as I've mentioned in this video to get away from any constant pressure. That does single the end of it. Now I will have a more in-depth guide on the new precision passing technique coming to you guys on the channel but for now this is a complete passing tutorial without precision passing and I'm coaching one-on-one. -on -one. I do monthly coaching classes where you guys can you know, almost join up like it's a university. I'm the lecturer for you. I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I analyze squads, custom tactics. I also have a lobby in there which allows you guys to request personalized tutorials on the academy, which you'll find very helpful. But uh, yeah, sign up, join now, and I'll see you guys over in my coaching Discord. But I'm out. Sayonara, au revoir, adios, salam ciao. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. And lastly, if you do want any pre-gaming fuel or supplement, then head over to atpscience.com, which is the first link in the description, and use the code DILLANETSATP at checkout to get yourself a discount. Not only is it the cheapest way to get supplements, but it helps me out a ton, guys, so thank you.